Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of the About to Review podcast. I'm your host, as always, that guy named John. You can subscribe to the podcast on any podcast platform of your choice, be that iTunes slash Apple Podcasts, Blueberry, Podbean, Podbay, (laughs) Google Play, Alexa. If you talk to your Alexa and say, hey, Alexa, play About to Review, please let me know if that works. Still not sure if I did it right. Uh, Also, definitely go to abouttoreview.com for full show notes. You can also support the show by clicking the support tab at the top of that website. When you go to youtube.com slash abouttoreview, which I hope you are watching right now because this episode is going to be chock full of pictures and video with the topic that we are going to be talking about. I say we Because this is a conversation between me and you, a.k.a. I am alone in the studio talking to myself. But regardless, it is going to be a great show. Also, you can go to threadless.com slash about to review. Actually, wait, no, switch that around. About to review dot threadless dot com. And you can look at all of the t-shirt designs. There are some long sleeve t-shirts, regular t-shirts, hoodies, coffee mugs, iPhone cases, a whole bunch more. And lastly, make sure to follow the podcast on all forms of social media at about to review Facebook, Twitter, Instagram made it super easy. All right. So I'm excited on this week's episode. It is a special one and it is being sponsored by the history channel. They reached out to me a little bit ago, and they asked me to review their new scripted drama called Nightfall. It premieres on Wednesday, December 6th at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific, and they were super nice enough to send me uh, advanced copies of the first three episodes, which I have had a chance to watch, and that is what we're going to be talking about today. The show is about the mysterious Knights Templar, Templar in the late 13th and early 14th centuries. So, before we get into that, it is time for the theme song, and then we will dive right into the new History Channel scripted drama, Nightfall. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Also, before we get going with the rest of the episode, definitely special shout out to Vexing Media, who does all of the audio and video editing for this podcast. They do tremendous work. Check them out at vexingmedia.com. And also Damien Randall from Ill-Mannered Media, at Ill-Mannered Media or at Damien Randall. He did the original theme song. So the new show, Nightfall. Before we get into that show... We have to talk about the History Channel's rather ambitious slate of scripted dramas, which include Six, which is a military show inspired by SEAL Team Six missions. Now, that show premiered in January of 2017 and had eight episodes in its first season. Already has been renewed for a second season that is going to compromise 10 episodes. So that show is really starting off strong. When you already get a second season on a show that only had eight episodes, you are definitely doing something right. And of course, we cannot talk about History Channel's scripted drama shows without mentioning a small little TV show called, oh yeah, Vikings. You know, that little show that is going into its fifth season. It is madness. This show originally aired in 2013. It is in the middle of its fifth season right now. And this show, similar to Six and also similar to Nightfall, started out small, did a nine episode season, and then they moved on to 10 episodes for seasons two and three. And then, due to the show's incredible popularity, 
expanded seasons four and five to 20 episodes each. That is crazy talk. When you look at the production value of a show like Vikings, and we will talk about the show like Nightfall, that is crazy that they are able to do something like that with a channel that is not really known for scripted dramas. They're mainly known for, obviously, historical documentaries, shows like that. To do scripted drama and to do it well, huge, huge kudos. And all of that is to say that History Channel is really starting to find its groove. And especially when it comes to scripted dramas, less is more when you are first starting out. It was a really smart move of them to essentially take that kind of BBC formula. So on the BBC, even a show like Sherlock that is incredibly popular, they do three episodes in a series and that is it. And then you have to wait an entire year. So starting off with these shows and only doing eight, nine, maybe 10 episodes in that first couple seasons to gauge your audience, really figure out how you want the show to go. The pacing is so, so smart. So huge kudos to History Channel for recognizing that formula and how to use it the most successful way. But we're not here to talk about Vikings or Six. We are here to talk about the new show Nightfall, which has an executive producer by the name of Hawkeye. I mean, Jeremy Renner. Yeah, that guy. Uh, This show is politically driven action drama that is about a group of Templar knights in kind of the search. Well, I mean, they, they had it at one point. Spoiler alert, it isn't the first episode, but they had it at one point. It is the search for the holiest relic in Christendom, which is the Holy Grail. Now, we are not going to talk about the knights that you might have seen before. You know, like the ones who use coconuts or the ones, you know, who maybe just maybe get mad at you for making poor life decisions, which is kind of rude. And also not the ones who are no longer the knights who say a two letter word starts with N, ends with I. That would be me. Uh, Instead, this show is about the ruthless warrior monks of legend of the Knights Templar. Now, the ancient Knights Templar were essentially masters of combat, combat and conquest and kind of sort of the Jedi from Star Wars are loosely based on some of those same characteristics. As they were both these warrior classes, they were also priests. They were also monks. They also had this kind of monastic order to them. But at the same time, if stuff goes down, they knew how to take care of themselves. So with that, you know, these warrior monks, they're governed by kind of One central person, as opposed to the Jedi Council, that just kind of told the Jedi what to do and where to go. This group, the Knights Templar, is led by essentially one person, that being the Pope. So the Pope at the time, uh, Pope Benefice, so he was not only the person who gave the direct orders, he was also the one who kind of financed the whole thing and who kept the Knights Templar going. And so these myths, these legends, these heroic tales of the Templars are still shrouded in a bunch of mystery. And because of that, and perhaps, you know, because of these choices that were made or the ones that were at least committed down to books, you have all of these exterior things like secret societies, hidden treasure, conspiracy, especially when it comes to the Grail. That old axiom of absolute power corrupts absolutely (laughs) definitely goes hand in hand with this quest pretty much any story that you can think of when it comes to the holy grail something happens and it starts corrupting either the people who are going to look for it the people who really want it for their own and when everyone wants a piece of a sacred object that has this potentially great power It, of course, (laughs) goes beyond a matter of faith and becomes really powerful. So that kind of sets the the stage for the show, for Nightfall. And right now, if you're watching this on YouTube, which again, I highly encourage you to be doing, even if you're listening to this on your regular (laughs) 
podcast platform, that is great as well. But I encourage you to go check it out on YouTube because we will be going over the trailer and also the character posters for this show. So who are these knights? Who are the royalty? Who are the other people that take part in this story? I'm glad you asked. Uh, and we're going to go over the knights first. And because I like to kind of make up names, and I cannot help when I see people and they remind me of names. So right off the top, we're going to start with Landry. Landry is played by Tom Cullen, and his nickname is Longhair, Longhair McBeardsley which you notice in the first episode and also in some of the trailers. Does not have long hair throughout the whole time. Definitely has a great beard. So Landry, a.k.a. Tom Cullen, a.k.a. Long hair, Mc, long hair McBeardsley, is the conflicted hero of this piece that we follow from the first moments of episode one. And he is kind of our moral compass as the show progresses. We see the show kind of filtering through him and the actions that he takes. And again, I have only seen the first three episodes, so I cannot really spoil too much. I think History Channel did that on purpose, which is totally fine, because uh, it, it makes you want more. So the next cast member is Godfrey, played by Sam Hazeldine, a.k.a. Medieval Richard Branson. Uh, he is the master and leader of the Knights Templar and holds the keys to potentially a few different mysteries because of his position because of his position in this order that already probably has some secrets and some different ways of communicating and anybody who has seen shows like indiana jones national treasure with nick cage da vinci code those types of hidden messages the higher up you go in an organization, of course, the more access you have to those. So Godfrey, as the master of the Knights Templar, really starts to set the stage as to where the story will go based on some things that happen. So the next character is Tancred, played by Simon Merrills, a.k.a. Sir Doudamis Thomas. Uh, he is Landry's right-hand man and trusted advisor, even though he has his own ideas of kind of what is right and wrong and how maybe the order should better serve not just the community, but also the great quest, which is the Grail. So as any good advisor, he definitely gives a helping hand while also giving that other objective point of view, being like, listen, Landry, my buddy. We need to go about this in a different way for the betterment of everyone when Landry may or may not be a little bit headstrong thinking just one direction. So next is Gawain, played by, and this is an Irish name, and I even asked one of my Irish friends how to pronounce this, so I, I hope I get it right. Uh, Padrick or Padrick Delaney. Oh, sorry, buddy, if I messed that up. Uh, A.K.A. Sir Gimsalot. Uh, that comes into play very early in episode one. And there's also kind of like a little nod to Skyrim in there. So any of my gamer nerds, uh, definitely take a look at that and see if you can catch it. Hit me up in the mentions if you know what I'm talking about. So Gawain, he is the finest swordsman in the order. But has to kind of come face to face with some harsh realizations that he might not be everything he used to be. And that inner conflict obviously starts boiling over because he knows what he used to be able to do due to some extenuating circumstances, a.k.a. Sir Gimslot. Uh, he starts to realize, okay, what is my position now? If I'm no longer this person that was revered and X, Y, Z, who am I? So that journey is really interesting for his character. Uh, next, like I said, is the leader, the direct leader the financial benefactor, the ruler of the Knights Templar, which is Pope Benefice, played by Jim Carter. Now, the rest of the characters do not get fancy names. Only the knights do because, well, they are knights and they, they should have those. Uh, Pope Benefice, Jim Carter, he is deliberate in his actions. 
And as the leader of this incredibly well-trained, incredibly well-funded private army, he knows how to display his power in the best ways to get the best results. So with that, and again, I cannot go into too many spoilers, but there are ways that you can exhibit power that are not so overt, that are not so in your face. I know what you did, and you know that I know what you did. Boom, here it is. But more under the radar more doing things that are unexpected and then you find out why really really interesting uh next person is parsifal played by bobby Schofield. so he is on his own kind of quest for vengeance and his character is just really young really brash and proves that you need guidance if you have any intention of obtaining your goals. You cannot just go out there all willy-nilly and think you can run shop. You have to have training. You have to have guidance. Rage and revenge is not enough. So that is an interesting character choice because he has such raw passion. You have to find a way to funnel that. You have to find a way to channel that so you can actually be effective if you want to still get revenge. So next character William de Nogere, played by Julian Ovenden. Now, he he will be very familiar, at least his character archetype, to a lot of people. He is the conniving, scheming, and incredibly charismatic advisor and also lawyer to the crown. Think of Littlefinger meets Varus, and then they have this crazy cousin who they taught everything they know, and so he... Is just super creepy. He knows the back ways around the castle. But he's so charismatic that you're like, oh, maybe this guy is on my side. Spoiler alert, they rarely are. So, next to the royal family. Isabella, played by Sabrina Bartlett. She is the princess and heir apparent who is on a mission basically just to find true love. And by true love, I mean some of it is just lust because she is a teenager. And she writes all these letters, so... But she just wants true love. She is on this quest to be betrothed to the best suitor possible. Uh, and you find out kind of within those first three episodes some things. So her mission, find love. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Now her papa, King Philip, played by Ed Stoppard. Now he is the somewhat benevolent and understanding king... But it is, okay, so first of all, I keep saying no spoilers and everything like that. This is history, people. A lot of these characters that I just mentioned are real people. So if you did, for whatever reason, want to spoil the show for yourself and kind of figure out where it goes, you could. But why would you do that? So he plays King Philip IV. And yeah, he is kind of benevolent. He is kind of understanding. At the same time you know that there is something deeper. You know that there is something else that is driving him. And you will find that out through the series. And his performance is great. Because again, you see those different tides. You see that inner conflict, even in this short kind of couple episodes that I was able to see. Now, to me, one of the most important characters in this show so far is Queen Joan. She is played by Olivia Ross, And again, she's arguably the most important character because all of her actions, compared to the rest, every action that Queen Joan takes sends ripples. And it affects everyone around her, every group of characters, because in an ensemble cast like this, you have those groups. You have the knights, you have the royalty, you have the pope doing his thing, you have Denogere doing his thing. But what she does, everything she does, affects them all way more than some of the other characters so i'm really fascinated to see where she goes and really where she directs this show and how we kind of find out the information and what information she provides in her portrayal as the show goes on so i'm definitely looking forward to seeing more of her all right so now that we talked about the characters and again like i said some of those are historical Do not look them up. Just watch the show. You will enjoy yourself more. Similar to like the Borgia. 
either version, you have the European version or the non-European version, you can look up those stories. You can look up Cesare Borgia and find out what happened to him. Or you can just watch the show. Be surprised. So for me, I'm a sucker for practically anything having to do with knights. Now, that being said, this show for being on History Channel is brutal. I was I was really shocked with kind of what they're able to get away with because you see some limbs getting chopped off, uh you see some swords going through faces. I mean, this is I mean, I will not say HBO level because come on now, that is crazy talk. But for basic cable, I was I was surprised with how violent it is. But I'm a sucker having to do with anything with the knights, medieval history, when it comes to movies and TV shows that are in this vein, there are three C's that I like to look forward to. Cinematography, costuming, and choreography. Those three C's help me build a foundation of the world that it takes place in. Because again, in these historical, you know, documentaries or dramas, whatever it is, there needs to be great cinematography, the costuming has to be on point, and the choreography, especially the fight choreography, needs to be there. So, starting from the top of that list with the cinematography, one thing to keep in mind, <laughs> in full disclosure, <laughs> this is the first season of this new show. If you come into this expecting, you know, Game of Thrones level, uh, you, get, you have to kind of temper your expectations. If you go back and watch season one of Game of Thrones compared to now, it can be pretty rough because they had to find their footing. They had to build that audience reputation of like, people like this. People are going to watch this. How about we get some more money as the show goes on? So that being said, this is a first season show, but I was impressed. The on location shooting that they did was great. The set design was really well done. Even though, yeah, there was a lot of composite shots, there's some CGI mapping, but that is okay. If that is what you need to do to focus on the story, as long as it looks right, totally okay with that. Speaking of looking right, costuming. <laughs> when it comes to these types of shows, any show that takes place in historical fiction or medieval times, the costuming has to look like it was actually made by hand or you lose that kind of cognitive dissonance. If the stitches are not right, if it just falls a little, if it, if it is tailored a little bit too well, it does not look right. It looks off. So there needs to be that kind of rough look to it, even with the knights. These knights have flowing white robes, but they have to look like somebody actually made them. All of the chain mail, all of the costuming, all of the design that went into this was exceptional. That was another area where I was really impressed because History Channel is this up and coming channel when it comes to these scripted dramas. This is not HBO. This is not stars with Spartacus or anything. This is History Channel. So the fact that they were able to find and create these, this level of costume design, I was really impressed. Now, when it comes to choreography, Anybody who listens to my show on a regular basis knows that I am pretty picky when it comes to fight choreography. It has to look real. It has to look genuine. Because here is what happens. In historical slash medieval fantasy films, if your choreography does not look right, all it does is look like it was shot at a Ren fair. Not to knock on anybody who attends Ren fairs. Ren fairs are great for creative outlets. But when you're developing a TV show, there has to be a different level of that choreography. And it has to come through, and it does in this show. The fight scenes in this were brutal. They were intense. And the good thing about it was they did not overstay their welcome. So kind of going back to that short season idea, walk before you run. The battle scenes are tight and they are well staged and that is what sells the show. You do not need to start off with a huge thing 
the big battle, which again, the first episode does have a large scale battle to kind of set the tone, which is fine. But then when it comes to the actual nitty gritty sword and shield battles, the choreography is small. It is tight. And I say small and tight. I mean, yes, there are some larger scale ones, but comparing this to other shows kind of in this vein, this one is much smaller. And I think that really benefits that. And yes, there are definitely some Zack Snyderisms with some slow-mo, but it makes sense. It fits. Now, all three of those, the cinematography, costuming, and choreography factor into this intense political intrigue that weaves into many ways through all of the characters. Well-written characters will always have flaws. And these folks in this show are all flawed, which is fine. It makes them feel real. It makes them feel human. If you have a neutral good character or a chaotic good character, I mean, come on, you just you have to have it feel real and fleshed out for it to be consistent. So this show, they do a really good job with that, and it keeps you guessing. Not even joking, in the second episode, something hit me with a twist that I actually like kind of dropped my pen. When I was writing notes, I set my pen down. I was like, wait, did that just happen? That was impressive. And then there was another twist in the third episode. So the fact that they are able to do that in short time frame, kudos. And yes, there will also be plenty of moments when you are saying, well, duh, of course they are the bad guy. It will have those moments. But this show earns it. And I think that is something that some other shows, when you see it coming a mile away, and you can pace it out, and you can be like, all right, this guy's going to do this and this and this. Sometimes that can still be fun, but a lot of times, that just feels aggravating. So with this, of course there were those moments where I was like, well, yes, that person is the bad person. But then it was something unique. There's something that happened in episode three in particular, that I was like, that was clever. That was really well done. When it comes to you, the viewer, if you're looking for a show that kind of has those power-hungry characters, like a house of cards, or the twisted medieval intrigue, like the show I mentioned earlier, Game of Thrones, but this also ties in that religious mysticism of shows like Vikings and Da Vinci Code, and it also has pretty epic moments. I mean, again, not quite to the scale of something like a Gladiator or a Braveheart, but it has that same tone. And to have that tone, even in a smaller setting, is still impressive. So while other shows are on kind of their, their winter break, and while they're doing those, if you're looking for something to fit that slot, if you're looking for something where it will give you that sword and shield and kind of intense uh, political intrigue, but also intense violence. Because uh, like I said, the show is not for kids. Very bloody, very surprisingly bloody for History Channel. But the rating system is what I will go into next. If this is your first time listening to this podcast, there are three choices for anything that gets rated, be it a TV show, a movie, a film festival, whatever it may be. Those three choices are good, bad, or ugly. Now, a good show, in this case, would be something that you would recommend to a friend, something for them to check out that you think they might be interested in. A bad show would be something that you might not have been blown away by. You do not really regret seeing it, but did not really do much for you. So it might not be something you immediately recommend. Ugly you would just avoid at all costs. You would tell your friends to not go near it. You did not like sitting there for however long you sat there watching it. So those are the three choices. Good, bad, or ugly. My official rating for Nightfall, which again premieres uh, December 6th, Wednesday, December 6th at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. My official rating is definitely a good I really enjoyed this show, and I think not just because I'm a sucker for this genre, because these characters are actually really well developed in a short amount of time. The first episode lays the groundwork quickly 
but efficiently. It makes you feel for the characters. So when things start happening that are more intense in episode two, because it goes quick. In episode two, you already feel for the characters. You already know and sympathize with some of the characters. So when things start happening, you are invested. So that, it, it was just, it was nice to see. Because coming into this, I really did not know what to expect. The trailers looked incredible. They already had me hooked. But watching it, I was invested right away. I was surprised every episode. Something happened in every episode that really took me off guard. So that was impressive, especially in three episodes. So like I said, if you are looking for a show to kind of fill that slot in the winter, this is a great choice to do that uh make sure to like this video that would be great uh this is a shorter one because like i said i only had the first couple episodes hopefully there is a great reaction to this podcast and to this video and history channel will maybe give me the next couple episodes ahead of schedule to do that i need your help so definitely let me know in the comments either on facebook twitter or instagram let me know Kind of let me know what you think about the show. What is something that you're looking forward to? Out of the cinematography, out of the costuming, out of the choreography, maybe which one of those is the most appealing to you? So for the most up-to-date information on Nightfall and all of the History Channel shows, make sure to visit history.com for the most information. They have all of the synopsis. They have the bios of the actors of the characters they even have a companion series that they did before this show that really goes into the true history of the knights templar so that is this week's episode uh it is a special one there will actually be an additional episode this week because you just cannot get enough but this one is very special i personally want to say thank you to history channel for giving me this opportunity it was really cool to check out a show you know that is hitting the airwaves soon and get a sneak preview and not only be able to see that sneak preview but to share some of that with you so in the meantime definitely go check out nightfall on all of their social media it will be linked below uh, both on youtube and in the podcast description head on over to abouttreview.com and see some of the pictures as well that go along with this episode if you were not able to watch it on youtube so that about wraps it up Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. If you are watching this on YouTube, make sure to click the like button and the subscribe button. Share it with your friends. Share it with your social media networks. I will be here if you have any questions and if you just want to talk about this great show. I'm excited to talk about this with more people once they get the chance. So for this special edition of the About Tribute podcast that History Channel was kind enough to sponsor, I have been your host, that guy named John, and we will see you next time. This has been an About to Review production. Thank you to Vexing Media, who provides audio editing services. They are a graphic design, website design, and digital media company. You can find them at their website, vexingmedia.com, or on Facebook and Twitter, at Vexing Media.